Welcome to the next video, not in the truck camper build series, but it's related. Don't, don't think it's not. So this is going to be a truck only video for all of the people back in the day that remember the truck, 78 Chevy, Big Red, whatever you want to call it. This video is going to be about some sway problems that we got with the truck camper on the top. This will not have a part number to it. You know why? Because it's not involved with the truck camper build series. So, follow along as we just try and get it closer to actually go camping. Roll the footage, let's go. As you saw, we got the truck camper loaded. It's ready to go, except on the test drive, we had some sway. It makes complete sense because, you know, we have a lifted truck trying to do something that a lifted truck should not be doing. But the only reason why I'm even attempting to haul this camper on this truck is because I don't have the fire truck ready yet. It has a fire body on it, doesn't have an eight foot bed on it. So this is the only vehicle that I have with an eight foot bed. So I figured let's at least try to go camping with it, right? Well, obviously it didn't work out. So bummer. What are you gonna do? You gotta keep moving forward. So, and we're gonna see if we can make this suspension, make it stable enough to at least drive it. Right now, it's completely no good. You cannot drive it, it's, da it's dangerous. So, I'm gonna show you what we got. It is squatting two inches, which is not terrible for, for how much this thing weighs. Pro I'm guessing 3,000 pounds. Now, if you remember, I'll post, it to, I'll post the link to the other video. I did have these rear springs redone recently uh, a couple years ago so they got eight leaves and in, in each pack of the rear so they're pretty heavy springs they're at least a one ton spring i'm assuming i don't know that for sure but it's definitely heavier than the original k20 which is a three quarter ton springs that they actually were that's originally what those springs came out of a 1984 k20 so that's what we got the squatting isn't isn't the issue. The issue is it's swaying. I don't have a front or rear sway bar in this truck because I didn't build it to haul a camper. That, that's what it comes down to. And now we're trying to backtrack. I've talked to a guy, he actually has a YouTube channel, Kenny of All Trades. You gotta check him out. He's got some cool videos, truck campers. He's always exploring up in uh, Minnesota and out that part of the country and it's awesome. He's got some good videos there. But he has recommended that I install something similar to the torque lift stable load modification that goes in between the overload spring, which is this bottom spring here. This is this truck camper is on it right now, so it's almost touching. So it would go in here and wedge in between here, and then it would make up that gap so you have less of a spring and you're always riding on your overload. Kenny of All Trades has a video that he talks about his suspension on his Duramax. Um, that he has a pretty heavy truck camper on single rear wheel. So it's a similar situation, a little different, but it's it's kind of the same. What he recommends and what he does is he uses a felling wedge in both the front and the rear of the, each spring. So four of them total on the truck are the rear springs. And we're gonna see if we can figure something out and make it work. What do you guys think? You're punching me in the head. These are the parts I got. These are steel brands, doesn't really matter, but it was the ones that fit plastic felling wedges. The ones I got are seven and a half by three. My, it's gonna, it's gonna be a little bit big, but we'll see if we can work. It doesn't have any teeth on it. I'm gonna try and, uh, I don't have holes in my leaf spring, so I'm gonna try and use a hose clamp to hold it in there. Let's see if it fits. I just ripped it down to the width, the same width as my springs, and then I just cut this little dado, I guess you can call it, with the saw blade so that this would sit, you know, inset in there. The felling wedge here, this one I'm going to have to hammer in there a little bit. Thank you. I got the truck jacked up from the frame, but it's not in the air. I just relieved all the pressure that the camper is putting on it, but it's kind of tough. See, they need to go in that groove right there. And then I pull this around 
and you'll figure it out as you go. Got to line up right about there. Slide the second one in. Same deal. Got to find that groove. Come on. And I go equal, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. And um, we'll see if the hose clamps, see if the springs want to spit these wedges out. There you go, I'll let these hang, cut them off later. All right, you can kind of see, we don't have complete, it's not completely compressed like I wanted it. Here's the driver's side rear. It's, it's more touching than it used to be. So I didn't film it, but the results from the felling wedges at this location were minimal. It did make very slight improvements, but you could barely tell it was still not safe and suede. So when jacking up the frame of your truck to do this modification in the rear springs, you need to get the springs completely unsprung if you can. This is about as far as I want to go where it's... Uh, you know, a little sketchy with the jack here. So this is where I got it. And you can see this is where I had them wedged in there before where they had where they were making contact and look how much room there is now. So we're gonna get these bad boys cinched in there harder and uh, hopefully get a little bit better of engagement. Going down. Here's one of the wedges after I hammered all of them in even farther. After hammering the wedges in farther, it made a tiny difference, but there still needs to be more improvements made to make this thing safe, so stay tuned.